if you're a business owner, I'm sure you've vibe coded a custom tool for your company before, but did you know that you can actually make it fully functional with admin and user roles and save yourself hundreds of dollars in SaaS bills every single month? Like this refund request tool are built in just four prompts. All of my employees can sign in and request a new refund. And I, as an admin, can see all requests my team submitted. I can reject, approve them, or mark them as completed. So there are no more back and forth emails. So today I'm going to show you how to build an app like this in just three prompts. And all you'll need are two free Google tools, AI Studio for the front end and Firebase for the back end. You'll find all setup steps and prompts I used in my free guide. So make sure to get that in the description. And I might as well mention that by the end of next year, I'd like to reach 100,000 subscribers. So if you enjoy videos like these, make sure to hit the subscribe button and let's get right into the video. So here's how my final app is going to work. Imagine I have three employees. Each of them can log into the system and submit a refund request for me to review. So I'm logged in as a standard user right now, and I'm going to go ahead and press new request, add a client name, amount, service category, and reason for refund, and submit the request. And once it's created, it's going to appear right here in history. And each employee is only going to be able to see their own request history. Now, if I log in as the admin of this app, I'm going to see all requests from all employees here in my dashboard. I can open it up, see who created it, review the details carefully, and then decide whether I want to approve, reject it. So if I press approve. It now appears as approved. So let's go ahead. I went ahead and actually submitted the refund. I can go ahead and mark it as completed. And of course, the employee is going to see it and be able to communicate that with my client. Now, before we add any backend or user roles, you're going to need a demo app built in Google AI Studio. So this is going to be my prompt. I'm just going to say, build a modern and minimalistic dashboard for processing refund requests. Users can submit requests for approval by providing amounts, clients, service, and reason. Once submitted, users can see all the refunds in history. And that's going to be literally it. I'm going to add the rest once I actually create a backend. And here's what my app looks like from literally just one generation. I'm very happy with that, apart from the blacked out input fields. So I'm just going to say, make all input fields background white and dark text and just send it in. If I go ahead and press full screen, I can see that I've got this visual dashboard right here. I can go ahead and create a new request and see history. So let's go ahead and just add a sample request right here. And as you can see, it appears in history and the dashboard is automatically updated, which is perfect now let's go ahead and make it functional so to make your app functional you're going to need a firebase account where all of your backend is going to live so you're going to head over to firebase console and then you're just going to click to create a new project you're going to give it a name i'm just going to say a refunds app and i'm going to disable gemini and google analytics for the project and then click create now, once that's done, the first thing you're going to need is a key to connect our backend to our frontend. And to do this at the top, you'll see this prompt to add an app. So go ahead and click this, and then you'll see this web icon right here at the top. Just press it. You're going to register your app. Just give it any name. I'm going to do the same refunds app and click create. And here's your SDK code. Now, this is literally everything you're going to need to connect your Firebase to Google AI Studio. So go ahead and copy it and paste it somewhere in a note. I'm just going to dump it into a Google Docs file and at the top I'm going to say SDK code and that's it. Now in Firebase I'm just going to click continue to console and the next thing we'll need to do is to add authentication so your users can safely sign in and view only their own information. So to do this head over to build, choose authentication and right here you're going to click get started. Now the sign-in methods are up to you, but for something like a user management system, I suggest you just select email and password so users can easily reset their own passwords. So go ahead and click enable and just save it. Now just head over to the users tab at the top and click to add a user. And we're going to add a bunch of users to just test out how it works. So the first one for me is going to be admin at your AI workflow.co and my favorite password test one, two, three. And I'm going to do the same for my employees. I'm going to say user one at your workflow.co, user two, user three, etc. 
Now, once you've added your test users, let's go ahead and add a database so we can store all of the user data. So you're just gonna head over to build again and click Firestore database. You're going to click to create a database and leave all the settings as default, except for the location. Just choose the closest one to your users and click create. And now that your database is ready, the only thing you'll need to do here manually is to add your security rules so the system knows that admins can see certain parts of your system and users can only see their own stuff. So head over to the rules tab at the top you're just going to remove the rules you've got right here and replace them with the ones I've got in my guide. Now, these rules are super simple. They only allow admins and simple users. So if you have something like managers, you're going to have to change it. Just go ahead and copy the ones I have and ask ChatGPT to change them for different types of users. Now, the rules I have right here are pretty general and would work for the majority of you guys. Basically, it says that every user, when they're signed in, are going to be able to see only their own information in all folders and subcollections they have inside of their own document. And also, there's a condition that says that if you're an admin, you can see everybody else's information. I'm just going to go ahead and hit publish right here. And this is literally everything you need to do in Firebase. Everything else will get added automatically. Now, thanks to the latest updates with Gemini 3, once you actually connect your Google Air Studio to Firebase, it becomes completely autonomous. It can create your whole database structure, save all user information from you just typing words into the chat, which is pretty amazing. But there has been a bug going around not establishing components correctly, which is why I created this monstrosity of a prompt which is a couple of pages in google docs you can get it in my free guys here you're just going to remove this prompt to paste your code right here and you're going to replace it with the sdk code we dumped in your notes earlier and then just go ahead and copy the whole thing right here i know it looks crazy but that's what it takes to get over the bug we've got going on right now i'm just gonna go ahead and send this prompt in and once it's done, you're just going to go ahead and test the connection. You should see this sign in screen right here. So go ahead and log in with one of the users we previously created in authentication. I'm going to do this. I'm going to say admin at your AI workload ho and type in my password and sign in. And as you can see, I got no errors. So the connection is working great. Now that our connection and authentication is established, let's go ahead and add a second prompt that is going to save all information our employees or admins add into the system into a Firestore database. Right now, we've only got sign-in working, so this is going to be the prompt. I'm going to say when a user signs in, save them in Firestore under users slash user ID with all their profile information. So that's just going to save every user that signs in into the system. And then I'm going to say when a user adds any information, save all records in Firestore under the user ID. As you can see, it's pretty general and will work for the majority of the system. So let's say I add a new refund request. All of that data is going to be saved automatically, which is incredible. 2026 is going to be the year of AI, so if you don't want to stay in the past, your goal should be getting really, really good at using it, which is why for this video I've teamed up with Outskill, the world's largest AI education platform, to give 1,000 free seats to the two-day live AI mastermind happening next weekend. This is a 16-hour intensive training that usually costs around $400, but you guys can attend it completely for free. And during this workshop, you're going to learn how to build AI agents, automate workflows that run even while you sleep, connect tools like Sheets, Notion, CRMs, and email, all to help you save hours every week and work smarter. And it's not just some random people teaching you how to use AI. The training is actually done by experts who have worked at companies like Microsoft, NVIDIA, and OpenAI before. So the people that are behind the tools we use every single day. So if you want to stay ahead of the curve in 2026, the training is happening Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. EST. And you can secure your spots with my link in the description or by scanning this QR code. And let's get back to the video. Once your second prompt finishes running, let's actually check if it's saving information in the database correctly. So I'm just going to go ahead and sign in with my previous user right here. And if you go back to Firestore database and refresh the page, you'll see that a user's collection was just created. And I've got my unique user ID inside it and all of my profile information. Now, let me go ahead and add a new request right here. I'm going to say client name Google a lot of money and a reason for the refund and submit the request right here. And again, if I refresh the page, 
you now will see this refunds collection. As you can see, Gemini decided to structure the database this way. I didn't tell it to do anything. And if I open up the refunds, you'll see a refund ID right here that I just created. I'm going to go ahead and open it. And as you can see, again, it saved everything. It saved the amount, the client, created ads, ID, reasons, service, etc. If you're not happy with how it's storing information or if something is missing, you can go back to the code assistant and just ask it to change the structure. It just takes a couple more prompts to make it perfect. But in my case, I'm actually going to continue to phase three, which is adding our user and admin roles. So I'm going to head back to Firebase. And I'm going to go back to the users collection and find my user right here, open them up, and I'm going to add a field right here. And the field name is going to be role type string. And the string is going to be admin in this case, because I logged in as the admin of the application. I'm going to hit add. Now let's go ahead and add the third prompt to our app. I'm just going to say, now let's add roles to the app. When a user signs in, check the role field under the user ID. So our app is going to go ahead and read the Firestore document and see if the user is the admin or not. Now, if the role is admin, they can see all info from other users private collection slash users slash user ID. Now, the next sentence is going to be completely custom to your app. In my case, I'd like them to see all their refund requests. So this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to say admins see all other users refunds in the requests tab. They can approve, reject and complete refunds. Now, if the role field doesn't exist or is anything else but admin, the user is just a basic user and can only request refunds. They can't reject, approve, or see anyone else's request. They're just an employee. And the last thing I want you to do here is go back to Firestore and the rules tab and just copy the rules we've just added and just paste them right here under my security rules in case Google AI Studio decides to do it incorrectly. So I'm going to go ahead and just send this prompt in. Now, I know how busy you guys are building your own businesses. So if at some point something is not working right or you're struggling to set it up or have a more advanced app, you can always book an AI consulting session with me in the description. We'll build it together from start to finish and make sure everything is working correctly so you can focus on the fun parts like wipe coding and making sure the system looks nice. So I'll leave the link for you in the description and let's get back to it. And now here's the fun part. I'm going to go ahead and sign in as one of my simple users first. I'm going to say user one at your AI workflow and my password and I'm gonna go ahead and add a request right here I'm gonna say cutecats.co $500 not happy with the service could go ahead and add the refund and I'm just gonna sign out and sign in as user 2 so let's say it's my second employee right here they go ahead and add a new request so this time it's going to be mermaid inc $1,300 and was going to provide a reason, submit the refund. And as you can see, this user can only see their own stuff. Now, if I go ahead and open this one, you'll see that I can't approve, reject or complete refunds because I'm just a simple user. Now, if I sign out and this time I sign in as the admin of this app, you'll see both requests have just submitted from different types of users. And if I go ahead and open one of them, you'll see that I now have this button to approve or reject one. So let's go ahead and hit reject. As you can see, now it says rejected. And in the next one, I'm going to go ahead and hit approve. Now, let's say I actually did the refund. So I'm going to go ahead and mark it as completed. And that's all I need to do. And of course, if I go back and sign in as user one, they can see that the cute cat's go refund was rejected. So they can go ahead and communicate it to my client. This is awesome. Now, my app is absolutely incredible. I can't believe just how easy that was to set it up. But how do I actually maintain it? Add users, change their passwords, add new admins. So let me quickly show you how you can do this. So all of this is going to be done inside of your Firebase account, kind of like your Google Workspace admin account. So here in authentication under users, you'll see all of your users listed right here. You could go ahead and click to add a new one. So let me go ahead and add a new admin first because this is a little bit tricky. So I'm going to go ahead and say Antonina, your workflow.co add my password and just go ahead and add my user. As you can see, they haven't signed in yet, so they're not saved in our Firestore database. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in as them quickly. And now that I signed in, I'm going to head over to our Firestore database. And here is our new user right here. I'm going to go ahead and change the role to admin. As you can see, it says user automatically. I'm going to say admin update. 
And that's it. Now I'd like this user to have their own password, of course. So I'm going to head back to authentication. And here I'm going to click on the three dots. And as you can see here, you can either delete accounts, disable users or reset their password. So if I go ahead and click reset password, you'll see this window pop up right here. I'm going to go ahead and hit send. And that's going to send a reset password email to our user right here. And to make sure those emails are sent correctly, you're going to head over to templates. And on the left, you'll see something called password reset right here. If you go ahead and press on the pencil icon, the first thing you can do here is customize your domain. As you can see, this domain, first of all, looks very unprofessional. And secondly, if you use it right now, it's going to work, but all of the emails will either land in spam or just won't appear at all. So go ahead and hit customize domain and add your own right here. And you can also add a subject and message and customize them completely with values inside of the percentage signs like app name and email. I was really lazy and didn't add my custom domain to this app since I'm just doing it for the video, which is why my email landed straight hit spam. But as you can see, I've got my reset password link right here that I can go ahead and click on it. I can change my password. I'm just going to type a new one and hit save. And now a new admin can sign in. And they see everything. They have this admin view right here and everything's working great. Now, adding simple users is so much easier than that. In authentication, you're just going to hit add user and add your user right here. I'm going to enter an email and password and add user. Hit on the three dots and choose to reset their password and send. And since we don't need to add the admin role right here, the user can just open the reset link, enter the new password and just use the system freely. So that's it for today's video. Every time I see AI build even more and more useful apps for you guys, I am so excited. So if you have any other suggestions for videos you'd like me to make, make sure to leave them in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.